Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. There we go. First lap in the Solomon Speedcross 4s uh, out on the trails today, listening to Daniel, I think Matthew, and one other gentleman commented in the last couple days about how they love the urban running here in Denver. Uh, but I'm going to actually go back out switching over just for a couple more miles gonna test out the la sportiva tempesta gtx um a little bit of a um bittersweet uh connection with this shoe this is the shoe that i attempted to run the 100 mile race in a couple months ago if you haven't seen that vlog it got pretty raw pretty real pretty serious go check it out upper right hand corner i attempted to run 100 miles in this guy and it uh, it was a serious situation so anyway i have not put these shoes on since that race the 100 mile race we're gonna put them back on i i just i needed to give it a break you know how it goes like when you have a race in a bad in a shoe not in a bad shoe in a shoe and the race doesn't go so well you know it's like uh, uh let's just give it a little rest give it a little rest all right let's switch over and get back out on those trips come on What goes up must come down. Let's roll. Ooh, my There it is. There it is. All right, YouTube, that was fun. I am very interested to hear your thoughts on the question of the day coming right up. And uh, okay, the Las Sportivas, I just ran in them the second round, and I think it was a good refresher and reminder as to why I probably will never buy another pair of Las Sportivas unless they just change a little bit. Why will I not buy them? Basically, they feel like uh, mountaineering running shoes too much a little too mountaineering-esque and that's okay like that's their their niche their genre of running shoe for La Sportiva and one of the most successful ultra runners uh, frankly in the last 10 to 15 years Anton Kropichka from Boulder Colorado he recently transitioned more from the running scene uh, due to injuries to mountaineering and he's made a very successful transition as far as you know just staying fit and getting the word out about the brand 
that he represents, La Sportiva now. He used to be a sponsored athlete through New Balance of all, of all companies, like an East Coast. Uh, I would put him more so in the space of road running. Anyway, all I'm saying is I just feel like La Sportiva has a little too much of a mountaineering boot feel to their shoes compared to Solomon. And listen, Solomon is aggressive, stiff, and uh, anyway, it's just a little bit of a different feel. All right, that's my two cents. If you are a La Sportiva fan, let me know. I would be interested to hear like just why and what works for you, what shoes work for you. And listen, I, I, I don't have enough experience with them, but anyway, I digress. A little bit of hot tea after the run. You know how I like to pack a hot drink on a cold day after a run. It just is so refreshing to have a hot tea. And I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to get away from coffee a little bit just a little bit so I'm not drinking it all day. I love it so much coffee but tea is a nice alternative especially a little bit of decaf just to simmer down now. Simmer down now on the caffeine. Oh, all right fun day up in the mountains let's head back to the house come on. Mm. Maintenance, maintenance, ladies and gentlemen. I still have that goal before 2019 to basically be able to, I, I know, touch my toes. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm trying to be persistent and consistent, but it's not easy to, uh, oh, I would much rather go run up a mountain as opposed to stretching. I just, oh, keep me accountable, YouTube. Keep me accountable, boy, oh boy. I don't know about you, but one of my favorite post-race snacks is definitely chips and salsa. It's, I think it's just replenishing that salt loss when you're out sweating and running. And I just, oh man, and I love spicy food. Love spicy food. Mm. Here we go, here we go. All right, Michael's home, family's home. They're actually already asleep, so I'm out here in the shed recording for you about the Solomon Speed Cross 4. Real briefly, just gonna talk about this shoe. I would buy this shoe if you live really close to steep mountains. As you can tell by the lug action on the bottom, it's a very aggressive uphill running shoe. You can use this for trails that are rolly, but frankly, like today, I was on a very steep trail and they paid great dividends. I've actually, actually the first run I ever did was probably, gosh, was it 12 months ago or nine months ago in this shoe? I've put about probably 150 to 200 miles into this shoe and it was on that exact same trail you saw me on. Nice and steep, uphill. So that's why I would buy this shoe. I would also buy this shoe if you live in a muddy area. Uh, Denver is not, we, we only get mud in the springtime uh, because the snow is melting and, and we have like this clay mud that forms. It's, it's a reddish clay mud and it can be really nasty, but it's only for about a month and a half of the year before the summer heat uh, dries it all out. And then we kind of turn into a high altitude desert here. So I would also buy this shoe if you live in an area that has a lot of mud you know, on the trails and it's gonna do you real, real good. Uh, it's it's basically, it's it's got a pretty nice ride. It's a little stiff, I will say that, but it allows you to attack the hills, if you know what I mean, if you know what I mean. Oh, good, good shoe, good shoe. All right, guys, I'm trying to keep today's vlog just a little shorter. I must say, I'm just honored that you would give so much time to watching these videos every day, many of you. Because I realize, I realize your time is incredibly precious. And as runners, we love the concept of time and keeping track of time. I know I do. In fact, it's kind of a little bit of uh, an anxiety in my life is like I'm a little obsessed with time. Like I love to use my time wisely. 
Anyway, so thank you for being patient with me in some of these longer vlogs. But guess what? A lot of you are watching them. Like, custard was the key word at the end of yesterday's vlog after 18 minutes. And many of you got all the way to that point and commented with custard. So thank you. What is, question of the day, what is your favorite type of running? Whoa, whoa. You, you're telling me there's different types of running? Listen, in high school, for me, I knew that there was cross country and I knew there was track. And that's it. I didn't realize that there are different forms of running, different spaces, different types of races, different distances. I had no clue. Uh, okay, let's just run it down. You've got road running, you've got track, you've got cross country, you've got mountain running, you've got trail running, you've got ultra running, you've got, uh, okay, a little more niche, fell running, and yes, that is the key word of the day, fell, F-E-L-L. -L. I am beyond excited to get over to the UK and do some fell running. You know, if you're in the UK, I'm coming over. I don't know when, but I'm coming, and we're gonna go do some fell running. And for me, my favorite type of running, and I know that's a very loose term, but I, I can't think of a better one. My favorite kind of running, type of running, is uphill altitude running. I love, if I had to choose one type of running to do for the rest of my life, it would be uphill at altitude. And if you're newer to the channel, which many of you are, every summer I run 14,000 foot mountains here in Colorado, what we call 14ers. And these 14ers, uh, usually it's about six miles of uphill running, about three to 5,000 feet of vertical, depending on the mountain. And it's just like, boom, you just get your workout in in like an hour and a half, just hammering up these, up these mountains. I love it. I love uphill running at altitude. And so that is the question of the day. What is your favorite type of running? And actually somebody commented a couple of weeks ago saying, hey, I'd love to see you do more track workouts. Well, I haven't done that much because guess what? It's just not my favorite type of running, but I see the benefit of track running. And I love the Olympics and watching the 10K and the 5K and the steeplechase and even the 1500. Like I love, I love watching track, but it's not necessarily at the top of my list for training, for running. But some people love the oval. So anyway, think about it. What is your favorite type of running? And as you're answering the question of the day, think about surface, distance, um, hilly or flat, uh, altitude or not altitude. Uh, some people, some people in Canada, like they will, they will literally go running, not with skis, just running with a sled, with a sled attached to them. And they'll do like 200 mile races in Canada. I'm not even kidding. Like, look it up. Oh, what is the name of the race? There's a race where you have to carry all of your gear for like 200 miles in the freezing winter. And you're running across like Canada. It's like, what, what? So that would be a type of running and bonus points to anyone who can think of a unique type of running that none of us know about. I actually know one and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say it cause I'm gonna see if somebody guesses it. Somebody actually mentioned it in the comments about 10 days ago. Um, I'll, okay, I'll just say it starts with a P. That's your only, only hint. And that's it folks, I'm wrapping it up, calling it for the day. I love you, thank you for being here. Oh, tomorrow we are going to be receiving a box in the mail because of you because of you youtube you know what's arriving so stay tuned for that oh my goodness i can't believe it i cannot believe it seek beauty work hard